It's been almost half a year now since most Wisconsin public workers have been contributing more to their own pensions and health insurance coverage. So what has the impact been on the state's economy? Well, while those hundreds of thousands of public employees have less money to spend, the governor says millions of taxpayers have more. Well, tonight, Fox 11 on special assignment digs deeper into the impact of the governor's budget. Here's Robert Hornacek. Thousands of people gathered at the state capitol to protest the governor's budget repair bill, including many public employees. Larry Fector was not one of them. I am not complaining. I understand there are people out there that have it a lot worse than what we do, and I, you know, I feel for them. Fector has worked in the public sector for 36 years, the last 12 years with the Iola Scandinavia School District. Under the provisions of Act 10, Nearly all public workers, except public safety workers like police officers and firefighters, have to pay 5.8% of their salary towards their pension and at least 12% of their annual health insurance premium. The impact on Fector's bottom line? In my particular family, because my wife is also a teacher, we're looking over $6,000. That money has to be made up somewhere. Fector says his family is simply spending less on things like lawn care, eating out, and recreation. But he's not worried about his own financial situation. I'm going to get by. Fector is more concerned about the collective impact of thousands of public employees, just like him, who now have less money to spend. That money is no longer being spent in your grocery stores. That money is no longer being spent in your, in your uh, snowmobile shops or your maybe the carpet guy has to wait another year or so. That's not being spent anymore. The State Department of Workforce Development estimates there are more than 368,000 public employees in the state. More than 42,000 of them are public safety workers who are exempt from the additional contributions. That leaves more than 325,000 public workers in the state. How much are those workers paying for their pension and health insurance? According to the governor's budget summary, the employee contributions add up to about $725 million. In the budget, it's classified as a savings. And in terms of the state budget, it is. Because if public employees did not make those contributions, taxpayers would have to. But for the public workers, it's an expense. And now hundreds of thousands of public workers have less money to spend. Public employees' paychecks are a lot smaller, so they're going to buy a lot less. Jack Norman is the research director at the Institute for Wisconsin's Future, a liberal advocacy group based in the Milwaukee area. So you've got public employees of all kinds, from school teachers to food service workers to state employees, whose paycheck is simply just not as big as it used to be, sometimes on the order of two to three hundred dollars every paycheck. So they have less money to spend at the local grocery store, the local furniture store. And so the ripple effects from that are fairly significant. According to the group's projections, which are based on the number of public employees in each county, the loss of economic activity in Brown County will be about $40 million a year, about $27 million a year in Outagamie County and Winnebago County, and about $10 million a year in Manitowoc County. What the governor did directly hits local businesses. But Governor Scott Walker doesn't see it that way. Do you think there's an economic impact to the increased benefit contributions for public employees? Well, I think it, it, there's a positive impact if you look at the alternative. Walker says the other options for fixing the state's $3.6 billion deficit would have had a much bigger impact on the economy. If we didn't do this, we'd have to do what other states did to balance the budget, and that's raise taxes, which would take money out of everyone's hand in the state or lay off thousands of public employees, which would be devastating to them and their families and have a much greater impact than just a few dollars out of their pocket. Walker has some experts on his side. These dollars don't come from nowhere. Andrew Biggs is with the American Enterprise Institute, a conservative think tank in Washington, D.C. There's no magic here that we can make the economy stronger by giving free money to people, because there isn't any free money. Any money that goes to public employees has to come from somewhere else, and that's somewhere else the taxpayer. So rather than raising taxes to pay for employee contributions, Walker wanted the employees, including himself, to pay more. I get it. Our households got about, uh, I think in the end it ends up being up to add up all numbers, but about $10,000 less per year. So I, I completely get it. My wife and I and our kids, uh, we feel that just as much as anybody else does. But we compare that to what our neighbors who don't work in government pay, and we realize we still have a pretty good deal. I think there's a lot of different ways it could have been done. Larry Fector says he understands the challenges the governor faced. He just thinks it was too much, too fast. For the people that say, well, it's about time we pay for this and that, 
that might be so, that's their opinion, I'm not here, I'm not here to try to change anybody's opinion about it, but really read between the lines and look at this more as a, as a tax because that's what it is and it's going to have the same effects as a tax. Fector says he's always considered himself a moderate Republican, but now he calls himself an independent. According to calculations from the governor's office, school districts and municipalities have saved more than $468 million because of their reforms. Most of that is attributed to the increased contributions by public employees. If you'd like to see an extended interview with Governor Walker and with Larry Fector, go to our website, fox11online.com, and click on the special assignment tab. And if you have a story you'd like us to look into, email us at fox11onspecialassignment at wluk.com.